I thought I should catch up with a mate of mine who knows about all things poisonous and bitey, Craig, to get some tips on how to manage a snake bite when you're out in the bush. Craig, you're on a four-wheel drive track. You get bitten by a snake. What do you do? Well, you do first aid. That is the, that, the moment you suspect you're bitten by a snake, first aid is the next thing that happens. OK, let's say you don't have a first aid kit at hand. What do you do? You run back to your four-wheel drive, you stay there. If you had the four-wheel drive, you could make do. All you need to do is try and achieve firm pressure along the affected limb. Most bites happen on the extremities anyway. That usually would involve somebody else helping you out. If you're on your own and you had a snake bite bandage, you could whack that on and then you could call for help. How far can you go when you have actually been bitten by what you assume is a venomous snake? Yeah. I get that question all the time, I bet you do too. Because if it was me and I was five paces from the car, I'm taking those five paces. But if I'm 50 metres from the car, I'm not taking them. You know, I don't think there's any rule, but the, the expert advice is stay where you are. The last thing you want to do is uh, move the patient or be physically active after a snake bite. So I guess yeah, the trick there is carrying a snake bite kit with you at all times, especially when you're going to a bushwalk or near water holes where you're going to find these, these yeah. uh, particular species, but also having the communication so that you can call in a Yeah, yeah and look, think about it. It's hard to get lost these days. It's hard to be out of communication. It's usually a conscious choice. There's that many options. So if it's me, I've usually got a UHF handheld. I've got a GPS with a emergency button on it. And then you've got your phone with all those fantastic apps that you can use for um, emergency situations. I think it's just basic risk management. You go four-wheel driving, you take a spare tyre, right? You go walking off from the car, you take a snake bite kit. Well, Craig, I'm pretty comfortable with applying a compression bandage to someone else, but to myself, never tried. Can you show me how? Yeah, sure. Love to. Oh, what about this? This looks like a good spot. So you've been bitten. First thing you want to do is stop and drop. So you've got to cease all physical activity. I'm about to ask you to engage in some physical activity, putting a bandage on, but I think it's worth that effort to do it. If you didn't have a bandage and you've just got a drill shirt, try to turn this into what we're going to do with that. I think it's counterproductive and you, you just overexert yourself. Mm. But just whacking a bandage on, I think that's achievable if you uh, get yourself to a stop as quick as you can. So we've sat down, we'd roll down the sleeves, so we just get a nice even coverage. You take off any watches, rings, bracelets. We're going to bandage over this. We're going to go straight over the top of the clothing. I'm not going to worry about cutting it off. So we're just going to get a nice, nice even coverage. Now I would start straight across the hand like so. And I'm just going to go round the fingers and make one turn. I'm going a little bit easier to start with, Pat. The crushed handshake is something you want to avoid. I mean, you might have to wear this thing for three or four hours or longer. And if you're crushing their fingers, well, you're just going to feel like wriggling the hand. So go a bit easier to start. Grab the thumb, lock that down, beautiful. And once you get to here, tension to form square and roll. Because it's a powerful bandage, you only need to just overlap it. So see where the fine print is here? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that as the guide. I'm just gonna overlap and join it up like so. If you find out when you practice this that you've run out of bandage by the elbow, it's just gonna be a little bit unnecessarily firm and you're gonna be reaching for another bandage. So try and work it so that when you get, finally get the hang of it, one bandage will do the whole limb. And this is assuming I've been bitten on the hand, for example? I'd say anywhere from the elbow down, this is what I'd be doing. But that pictogram is fantastic. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. It is just so easy. It's, it's all done and then, uh, if anything, it's going to make the heart rate go down because you're kind of feeling like you've actually done something good for yourself. Indeed. I mean, calm and in control is what you want to feel yeah. in, in this sort of emergency. So the more you know about what to do, the better off you're going to be able to do it. I'd probably lie down, I'd keep the affected limb below the heart because you don't want to drain it. I'd put my phone on speaker and put it next to my ear and I'd talk to the emergency services. I wouldn't walk out. So it, you know, a well applied bandage will be undone as in its effectiveness will be lost if you try and uh, march yourself back to the car. If you've got nothing and nobody's coming for, it, for you, well that's a, that's a tough decision, but in those situations you've got little choice other than to walk back to the car. But uh, a little bit of uh, simple planning, snake bite kit, communication, and you're good to go. You can enjoy the bush without that, that fear holding you back. And if you did have to stay in the one spot because it was 
far too far to walk out. The chances of your body metabolizing that poison is far better, obviously, if you're slowing the process down. If you stay in the one spot, it puts your lymphatic system into an idle state. So it, it works off You've muscle got a contraction, leech there, mate. going for the throat, <laughs> vampire leech. Uh, yeah, so keeping, your lymph, keeping yourself still slows down the lymphatic fluid. That's probably where the snake venom is. And so it, moves, it will move very slowly into your, to get to your bloodstream. So if you're bitten there, it's got to work its way up to your lymph nodes and then go into your bloodstream. So that's what you're trying to interfere with. So yeah, keeping still is uh, the best thing you can do. It, it has to be constant throughout everything. If it was a torso bite, that's unlucky. Most bites happen on the extremities, but a torso bite, you keep still. That's what you do for that. Uh, but everything else, you can aggressively go after it with a, with a compression bandage, trap the venom where it is and hold it in place. Now it's not inconceivable that you could wear that, that bandage for hours and hours and hours without uh, snake bite symptoms. That to me is reassuring. I mean in the modern world with modern communication, you, know, you can be in a hospital bed in a matter of hours from just about anywhere. Fantastic lesson mate, I really appreciate that because they are the common questions that people want to know. How far can I go yeah. and how do I do this on my own? And uh, you've straight away made me feel comfortable I think uh, the important thing though is with these bandages, they are reusable, so you, yep. you should really be practicing in the lounge room. You can wash them, you can reuse them, yeah. Brilliant. Get the kids onto it. If you're doing a kid, like with a, you know, a thinner arm, you maybe go a little bit easier, mm -hmm. same as you might with an elderly person, but for everyone else, you can just hit them up, hit them up with the squares. You can see the color change and you just check the fingertips, do a fingertip pinch. That tells me the blood's still getting through, mm -hmm. but with any luck, the lymphatic system is well and truly retarded and the venom is staying where it is. Brilliant. Not a bad first go, mate. Oh, thank you, mate. Well, thank you so much for the tips. It's, uh, it's reassuring and, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can get this message out to a bunch more four-wheel drivers and, uh, and uh, if the worst comes to worst and they need, uh, they need to use it, then uh, they're going to be in bloody good hands. Indeed. I mean, there's no reason to let fear of snakes stop you from enjoying yourself. You just need to be able to manage the risk. And it is going to be a pretty big snake season, I hear. Yeah, I think all the reports I'm getting is it's a massive snake season. We've had all that rain over the last few years. Snakes don't like that, but they're resilient. And now that the food's abundant, they've, uh, they're bouncing back. Thanks for the tips, mate. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Hope you never have to do it. <laughs> Me too. Thanks, Craig. I feel a whole lot safer and smarter in the bush now.